everyone, I am Namesha, CEO founder of Cyber and GIS Solutions. With over 14 years of global experience in cyber security, I had the opportunity to work with leading organizations on a wide range of initiatives. Right from technology implementations, cyber maturity assessments, GRC solution deployments, vulnerability assessments, identity nexus management, among others. I'm thrilled to announce the launch of my very first podcast, Cyber Podcast with Namesha. Join me as we dive into conversations with industry experts, explore emerging trends, and share real-world insights in the ever-evolving world of cyber security. So, without further ado, let's see who's my guest for today. Hello everyone, welcome to Cyber Podcast with Namisha. I'm absolutely thrilled to kick off with my very special guest today, Tracy Edwards, General Manager, Security GRC and Advisory Services at NBM. Many of you already know her and the incredible work she has done in the field of cybersecurity. She has around total 25 years of experience across various leading organizations with 13 plus of experience in cybersecurity. She is the one who introduced the neurodiversity program within NAB, which allows people with autistic spectrum enter a meaningful way in cybersecurity employment. To support her causes, now she is playing the role of ambassador in Genius Armory Initiative, Cybersecurity Guardians. So, before we deep dive more into cybersecurity and GRC, let me quickly hand it over to Tracy for a quick introduction. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you so much, Namisha. Look, it's an honour to be here. It's certainly an honour to be your first podcast guest. I don't think I've done anything that special, but um, been in cybersecurity for a long time um, and certainly loved every day of it. So really pleased to be here and really pleased to dig into some of the details that you want to know about. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. All right, let's dive into the podcast questions. Here we go. Okay, so let me kick off with... So, can you tell us your path to becoming General Manager Security GRC Advisory Services at NBN? Sure. So, as you already noted, uh, 13 plus years in security. So, it's been um, definitely a journey. And I think I started pretty much, I'll say, nearly 30 years ago in the industry being technology. Uh, Security wasn't even really a thing then. It was, you know, operations. It was networking. Um, it was really hands-on technical experience, uh, operational um, manager. And then in 2010, I got the opportunity to go across to um, National Australia Bank as a security integration manager, which I had no idea what that was, but I thought it sounded interesting um, and took uh, a completely different path to what I thought I was going to go down. So when I entered the security industry, I found it was an incredibly... It was a small industry at the time, but still incredibly passionate. So it just allowed me to really dive into an industry, get my hands dirty and really do good work and meaningful work. And I guess I just, I guess I thrived in it, although I didn't know at the time I was thriving in it Um, and just making a difference in small ways that when you look back on the many, many years that now I've been in in it, um, hopefully I feel like I have contributed and certainly contributed from a people perspective just to to open some of the the doors that might otherwise not have been opened. True. Thank you so much for that, Tracy. It's truly fascinating to hear about your journey in cybersecurity, especially how back in those days security wasn't even considered a priority. So what drew you to cybersecurity leadership and what keeps you motivated in this space? Yeah, so to be honest, what drew me was that I was offered opportunities so people, um, leaders at the time, saw things in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself, and that's often the way. Uh, so I was afforded opportunities to step into leadership roles, uh, and I guess I, I brought some value, maybe a slightly different value to the traditional security people at the time. Right. Um, so it wasn't necessarily technical skills, although I've got a level of, of technical skills. Mm-hmm. It's certainly not to the level that most security people would um would probably value um, but I think now security is so much broader than just technical skills uh, you really need the communication skills you need business skills you need delivery project management True. skills so it just broadened the ability to be able to add value and step into leadership roles to really bring people along and and deliver and see value in what what's being delivered 
It's really great to hear how much impact you have had on security industry and how your mentors supported and believed in you. It's always amazing to have people in your life who remind you that you are special. Maybe the another one is like, what are the top cyber threats industry is currently facing in Australia um, from your perspective, uh, you think? Yeah, and look, there's, there's, everyone has a view on this and they're, they're fairly um, unique to, to the time. I think right now, of course, everyone is talking AI. True, and I think true, that will true. obviously, new technology, not just yeah. AI and um, LLMs, will actually bring, I guess, a greater level of sophistication, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to, to phishing and being able to um, impersonate real mm-hmm. people, whether it's part of an insider program perhaps whereby they impersonate somebody else to get themselves into the, the door of an organisation right. um, or just general phishing campaigns. Sure. But I think, you know, technology is always going to be a threat as well as a way to support us through those. Sure. So I think it's a, it's a two-way street there. So I think technology is a big one. Um, I think certainly at NBN what we've looked at is the broader obviously our geopolitical situation mm-hmm. which are always changing and we always need to be aware of mm-hmm. and you know as as you call out you know we're now on very high alert for, for that within um, Australia but also you know where you, you may have industries like the telco industry and the, the power industry that really is part of the big food chain true, so true, if one true. gets impacted it'll impact the others so I think there there are a, a key threats in that space um, but predominantly, you know, you've then also just got the key threats of, of um, what have always been around, and that is organisations maintaining good hygiene to try yep. and prevent those threats. Totally agree. Emerging technology and geopolitics are key resources of modern cyber threats. How do you ensure GRC, which is Governance Risk and Compliance, are not just tick boxing exercises? and strategic enablers. So I know that we both have been working with GRC for a long time now. So so yeah, so this question is really an interesting one for me too, actually, yeah. This is probably the most common question I get yeah. asked because GRC can be a compliance exercise yeah. because we all need to, we do actually need to tick a box. Yeah. And especially when you are a, um, you know, a critical infrastructure and you have government and regulatory obligations, mm-hmm. you actually need to meet those. But I think the important thing is that you meet them with the right intent and you met them you meet them to enable good security. And mm-hmm. it's the old saying that, you know, um, compliance isn't always good security, but good security should always be good compliance. Absolutely. So that's definitely a mantra. And the way I guess we look at trying to prevent the tick and flick is it's culture. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things come down to culture. And it's having an organisation where everyone thinks security is just a part of their job and that it's actually their accountability to ensure that what they do meets the right intent. So that comes from the the top down. And when you're given a directive that we want good security, it puts everyone on notice Mm. that we're not just ticking a box and flicking, we're actually doing good security. And I guess one of the, the really strong examples is our use of language. So when we're talking about good security and we must and we should, you know, when we're giving directives about our standards and our policies, that needs to be reflective of fairly direct language yeah. so that people aren't, and people generally come into work to do the right thing. And so when you set up standards and policies and you give them clear direction on what needs to happen, and it's not open for interpretation, you know, just using the words, you know, must instead of should, it takes that interpretation away. So it's a very clear message that you will do good security and you will implement something the way it needs to be implemented. Absolutely agree. Uh, Strong security naturally leads to good compliance and so much of it ultimately comes down to organisation structure. What qualities, like the key qualities, do you look for in future cybersecurity leaders? Wow. Um, I think curiosity. I think people need to ask questions. And I think in these roles, never just accept it's the whole security mentality of a verify. So we need to verify that what we're being told is, is accurate and um, is defendable. So I think that Definitely that curious nature and questioning nature is important. Yeah. Problem solving. 
And I just think uh, having, you know, a, an ability to understand people because at the end of the day, security, like any uh, part of the business, is reliant on people, not just processes and technology, but it's reliant on people. So it's understanding the people around you, um, the culture that you're working within, and ensuring that you know, you've got the right people with the right fish and they understand what the culture needs to be just to bring them along. Yeah, true. I completely agree with that, Tracy. Curiosity, problem-solving skills really matters along with accountability and mentorship. That brings us to our final question. So what, according to you, is the biggest cybersecurity myth? Biggest? Well, this is an interesting one. I think <laughs> of so many myths out there and legends. Um, yeah. But one of the reasons I actually came to NBN was that a few years ago I, um, I went to an industry forum and often these industry dinners and forums, yeah. you know, you have the, the people there that have senior positions right. and they talk about security and often they talk about it as if, as if it's a black magic mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really challenging and difficult to understand yeah. and only certain people with certain skill sets can get into the industry yeah. Yeah. and it's a bit of a, I'll call it almost a, a closed door club mm-hmm. for certain people. And the um, CSO at the time who is still the CSO at NBN, was at my table. And um, they were talking about some of the myths around security Uh, and how to break down some doors and barriers to get more diversity into security. uh And um, the comment he made, Uh and I won't be as colourful as he was, um, but his comment was that security isn't that beeping hard. So it kind of broke down a barrier to me that says, it, 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 there's not that black myth there. You right. can actually come into security and bring your whole self, bring mm. what what value you can bring and the experience that you've got. It doesn't necessarily have to be just a, um, a pen tester yeah. or a firewall engineer. True. There True. are so many different skill sets that you can bring and really bring value to that organisation. True, absolutely, absolutely true. Empowering everyone to be part of cybersecurity is the key. Breaking down those traditional barriers is how we create a stronger, safer environment for all. Thank you, Tracy, for an insightful and engaging discussion today. Your perceptive insights really made our episodes stand out and we'll stay tuned for more episodes to come. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We hope everyone enjoys this podcast and stay tuned for more to come.